Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look at Tether Caps image pre-processing capabilities and how it can help us solve CAPTCHAs in a better way. On the screen, you see five CAPTCHAs which could not be solved correctly by Tether Cap because of the noise in the CAPTCHA. Let's start uh, and try to solve them uh, and send them to image pre-processing engine. So to send a CAPTCHA to the image pre-processing, I right click on the CAPTCHA and send it to image pre-processor. You see that there are several stages here that would be followed for every CAPTCHA. Once you choose to perform image pre-processing on a CAPTCHA, so a CAPTCHA would enter at this stage and it would go through all these stages following the arrows and then you can try to solve it. So these stages are all optional except the gray scaling. This is the only mandatory component which would average out the RGB components as per the several uh, techniques here uh, to create a grayscale capture that you can then provide to your uh, image preprocessing algorithms from this stage onwards. So for this capture, uh, we can see that this potentially is a blue text and can be of value like which is high in the brew range. So what I can try to do is uh, remove this by choosing maximum of RGB. So what this does is it picks every pixel from the capture image, finds, identifies the maximum value out of R, G or B components and then sets values of all the three components equal to the highest value. So this, in this a, a CAPTCHA image, potentially the uh, value of the blue component was close to 250 or 255. When I did maximum, it made it to go to the highest values and then uh, it was white because it would be like 250, 250, 250 or 255 and that is white. So we have removed uh, the base noise here and then uh, we can go to the next stage which is smooth or sharpen so what this does is this basically spreads out the noise and that is the purpose of having this filter here I will activate it so you would see this activate buttons for all the different stages so a filter would be applied to a capture only when the activate button is checked so when you you see when I check it or uncheck it there is a difference so let's let me move it to five passes and if I do it you can see the difference so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a one pass so what happens with one pass is that the image and the filter uh, sorry the filter would be applied to image only for one time if you increase the number of passes here it will be more number of times for this purpose I only need one pass and then uh, we will go to the set cutoff uh, I will activate this and we will see how it really works out. So this is the histogram that is created out of the image. It shows you the distribution of uh, RGB components, I would say the grayscale component against the number of occurrences. So here you see that uh, the value, pixel value of 250, RGB value of 250 is seen around 4000 number of times and 255 is seen close to five and a half thousand. So what this slider allows you to do is, it sets the value of anything under it, uh, under the value of the slider. For example, if the grayscale value of a pixel is uh, 110 and the slider is at 148, anything less than that can be made to be black. Anything more than that would be white or you can do a reverse with selecting the different button here with different radio button so what I'm trying to do is finding I'm trying to find a good threshold where the text is more visible and the noise goes off here I think this is a good set, good setting yeah where most of the noise is gone off and the text stands out other than few dots and a few other things here so every grayscale value less than 212 has been made zero which is black 
anything more than that has been made white now <coughs> we still see that there are some noise some pixel here so what we're going to do is we're going to apply the chopping filter so what this will do is for any consecutive number of pixel sequences with which do not have the same value let's say there is a line random line in the capture which is like one pixel wide or two pixels wide it would go through that both horizontally and vertically and replace any pixel values uh, non-consecutive which are non-consecutive and are less than this width so for example here if I do two you can see that more things are getting cut off three more things four more and five the entire text goes away it means that the width of the text is less than five pixels so we can live with one because that is giving us good results then I can try to solve the capture which is correct now pyqb3 then what I need to do is I need to enable the image pre-processing we know that this capture has only uppercase and numerics I will remove the lowercase for better accuracy and then I will try to solve the captures again you now see a significantly high success ratio this is correct this is correct this is also correct this is also correct which is close to 80% here which is like 80% of the captures could be solved let's look at one more capture that will uh, allow us to see one more interesting feature of this tool first thing I will do is I entered the capture URL and then I will remove the image preprocessing because this was pertaining to the other capture type I will retrieve some number of captures and then what I'm going to try is I'm going to solve these captures I'm going to select one send it to image preprocessor here to ensure that the noise and text level are as far as possible I'll try different values here I'll select different radio boxes and see which one provides me the maximum benefit so this one the minimum is the one which is providing me maximum benefit I really do not need the, uh, the blurring part because the noise doesn't really uh, I really don't think that is really the prime component here these lines is something that we have to remove out I am not going to use a setup cutoff filter but I am going to use the grayscale buckets let me show you how it works so these buckets what they do is they have the grayscale from 0 to 255 divided in a large number of buckets so any pixel with the value grayscale value between 0 to 12 is going to add towards the percentage here any pixel value which is in this range would add to the percentage here and so forth so here I can selectively pick the grayscale range that I want to make white black or I want to leave it as it is let's start doing it so that you can see as we are progressing so if I do a white here wow, I see that all the three lines are gone then I can do more white I will start doing it let's see okay so the moment I do a white here on 39 to 51 range that E T and R text have become white so I want them black I will make it black similarly I'll keep going to make everything white until the text blinks so here we have V I will make it black then I'll keep on going and I think we have the text and we can make everything else as white so see the difference uh, one small selection how much it makes there in the capture I'm going to make this white awesome and then I'm going to remove this because I don't really need it and then I'm going to try to solve it so which is correct and then I'm going to put it in line and I'm going to give it a go I'm going to increase the count to 10 I'm going to give it a go all right let's see this is correct this is correct this too is correct and this one appears to be correct 
I think yeah that's it and we'll mark this correct and see the stats so we have gone up from say 0% to 40% that's a big jump right now let's try one more captcha which is which looks easy but is a little bit involved and is tricky to solve so this is F here and I'm going to remove the image preprocessor and I'm going to reduce the count to 5 and I'm going to start the tool again so you see that here even though the text was absolutely clear desert camp could not retrieve the text the reason is that when Tezer, uh, when the Tesseract OCR engine sees the border with the same color as the text, it is not able to retrieve the text. So here you see that the CAPTCHA has a border which is black in color and the text too is black. So somehow it gets confused and is not able to retrieve the text here. So this tool we will require to remove the border here. So what I'm going to do is send it to image preprocessor. Uh, remove all the filters that we have applied so far so I think this one yeah this one I'll remove it and the only thing that I need to do is do the border width modification so I have made for border less than or is equal to one pixels replace with white or black so I can do it two three I'll just keep it two and then I'll try to solve it since the current character set is on capitals I'm going to choose the lowercase and I'm going to remove the uppercase here and I'm going to try it again that's correct let's go now and try to solve all the captures first we will need to put it in line and then we will solve the captures so you see now we have a much higher success rate so one thing I wanted to highlight is that every capture starts at this stage passes through all the different stages in order you can select or deselect the stages and then you can try to solve it here before applying the filter so every captcha once you apply the filter would first be processed by the image preprocessing engine and then would be given to the OCR engine right if you really want further reading there is a very detailed white paper on tether cap which will give you details about the tool and all the features plus comprehensive details on the image preprocessing tab on how you can set it what type of benefits you can retrieve and how you can utilize it to solve your own captures alright